Hi and welcome to another episode of uh, Restoration Shack. So in this one I've had quite a few subscribers have asked me about the 144 spoke wheels um, and how to rebuild them. So the front and rear wheels, although they're 20, they're 20 inch, um, they do have different size spokes. The hub on the front wheel is actually slightly bigger. So if you'd got two rims and 288 spokes you'd find out you'd have to set them out into four different types two different sizes for the front two different sizes for the rear what I'm going to do is focus and rebuild a rear wheel based on the fact it's a little bit more difficult because you have to take this sprocket out to get the spokes out from behind the um, behind the rear sprocket so what I'll do is just going on general condition of this we've got a number of spokes missing hopefully you can see that on camera there's a couple there missing um, it's been painted a ridiculous colour green. Um, the rim itself is good. Um, the paint has actually protected it. So I think once I get it stripped, I should be able to get this uh, rim polish up nicely. I've got some spare spokes out of um, just a, a spares bike that I had. So I can re-spoke this with newer spokes. Um, the the uh, coaster brake's broken as well. So when we take that apart, I'll show you how that's built up. But I'll just try and get it a bit closer to camera. I don't know if you can, if that's coming up in this light. But as I say, you can see this kind of weird green colour that it's been painted, and that's on every single spoke. So I have to basically go to town and clean every spoke on it. So yeah, without further ado, let's just. I get this. Obviously, it's got a non-original tire on it as well. So I'll get it uh, stripped. I'll probably just only talk when we do when I do specific things like getting the the hub uh, the coaster brake out but after that what I'll do is I'll do high speed because a lot of it will be take a spoke out and repeat that 140 odd times so yeah let's get on and let's get it done So I've got a set of um, I think they're called cone spanners, um, basically to get these different sizes off in there. So it's, it's basically the, the grade up from I think it's 13. So I've got 13, 14, 15, and 16, which are the pretty much the mainly used sizes. And a standard 15 um, for getting you know, anything. That's usually for the uh, to get the axle nuts off. Should wind out like that. If you can see, it's got like a helix on it, spiral, and then there's obviously the bearings. Looking at the bearing cage in there as well, um, that's also damaged, so I'll replace that. And we've got another bearing in here. And it should pull out from the other side, just drop out, but I want to try and keep it and show you the. another bearing cage on there and this is the arm which fastens to the uh, frame to then allow you to get your coaster and then in here if I can get it so get a set of pliers okay, I'll use a small screwdriver so in here there are the shoes and there's a little clip um, it's just a matter of getting it out So you have like a your sprocket winds into that like so and then as you turn it it kind of moves this uh, up and down and it forces these two shoes out which then lock onto the um, hub so like I say well I'll go through that bit more detail when I'm piecing it back together but just try and keep that together there 
So we'll go back and follow that, which we'll just put there until we click on it. So now that that's removed, that gives me access to these uh, spokes. Looks like in the past as well, we've had a repair there. Somebody's soldered up on, soldered a couple of spokes on because they were probably broken. So we'll do that as well. So then it is a case of screwdriver or sprocket key, if you've got, which I've got as well. But I normally just try a screwdriver first, and I'll just basically go through and loosen each spoke in turn, just go around it. This is going to take ages. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just put this on super high speed, loosen them all off, and then we'll I'll pick you back up. So as you can see, I've moved on to just an electric drill with a flat bit in it um, and took them out. It is quite cold, so trying to undo them by uh, hand. I started with the screwdriver, but trying to get, kind of wind them out by hand is, is quite difficult uh, in this weather. So what I'm going to do is rather than just go through the entire process of stripping these out, you can tell what I'm doing. I'm basically just removing all spokes from around the uh, wheel and then I'll bring you back when I've done. So we're back, um, I've done all but one, I just thought I'd leave that in just to sort of stay. So you saw me with the electric drill with just a flat uh, screwdriver bit in it. What I'd recommend is first off, and this is through experience, is to start with just a standard screwdriver, um, flat bladed screwdriver first, because there is quite a lot of tension on these wheels to keep them rigid. And if you go straight in with the power driver, what you'll find out is you'll end up shredding some of the um, little spoke nuts. You'll, you'll end up shredding the thread off the top, uh, shredding the, the piece off the top where the screwdriver goes in. Um, it looks like somebody's done that in the past because this one's there's quite a lot missing. So I left that until the end. So all I can do then is push it through and turn it off and spin it off. So I don't know if you can see just in the top there, but that's all gone. Um, it's, so like I say, once you've done it with the screwdriver and release some of the tension, then you'll find it's a lot easier with the with the power driver. Now, I also would say is put, have a little couple of tubs, one for your spokes and one for the spoke nuts. Um, it's not so critical with me because I've got spares, but try and do it in an area where if you drop the spoke nuts or the spokes, you can find them because if you lose them, Spoke nuts aren't difficult to get, but your spokes, you're going to have to end up finding them measured to the 20 inch wheel and a low rider wheel, so they'll be different to a 72 inch, a 72 spoke wheel and it'll be different to a 36 spoke wheel because of the hubs and the, and the sort of patterns on them. So don't lose these. And if you find a really tough coming off, maybe a spray of uh, penetrating oil or WD 40, because, like I say, if you break the threads off, which I did. Uh, on another wheel, um, once you break these off, once again, you, you, you've lost you, you've lost your spoke, and you're trying to source new spokes. So eventually, you end up with a hub, whether it's front or rear. A lot of crap, especially if it's been painted. Um, the rim, in whatever condition, like I say, this is going to come up okay or quite well actually. Um, it's not the easiest way to do this, but I've sometimes find it's the best way to clean the rim because you can get it off you can really go to town on it you can metal polish it put it on a wheel uh, and polish it up whereas normally you're going through it with a passive wire wool or you know some other uh, kind of cleaning material so this does do the better job it's just very labor intensive so i think this first stage i wouldn't say it's the easiest um it's it's needs a degree of skill but it's you know putting it back together is where it really becomes complex so we'll get on to that later but uh, it's just time i think it's took me about half an hour 
to do. So what I'll do is I'm going to dip those in the citric acid bath because there's a few of them are rusty so that'll take that off and then I've got to clean them all which is going to be a bit of a job but um, you know it's it's what's needed to be done so they're going to get dipped they spoke not so okay and then what I'll do is I'll come to uh, start cleaning these up so I'll just go and dip those and I'll bring you back all right so they've gone in the citric acid bath um, I'll leave them in for 24 hours I think we'll put that to one side and I'll just work on the hub um, not many of you are going to have the same issue I've got where it's been painted but what I'd normally do is take a small Stanley blade um, and then scrape off all the excess paint or all the paint really um, I'm trying to do it with a flat blade so I don't scrape the metal too much um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably uh, put it on a metal polisher and just polish it out I just want to get rid of some of this paint that's everywhere I think what the, if I remember right when I bought this bike it was um, a painted frame um, and they basically kind of sprayed the center of the wheels and the spokes it wasn't a good look for me but um, it's, you know everyone to the room with the bikes there's a bit of damage on these spokes here on these spoke holes here I don't know if you can see we've got I think it's weld or um, solder on there so I'm basically going to try and get the solder gun out and just kind of open those holes back up So for a first pass, quite happy with that. Got rid of a lot of it. There's still some in the ridges there, but I'm going to basically wire wool that first next, and then go on to uh, machining it, uh, polishing it on the machine. So quite happy that I've got rid of probably 95% of the paint that's on it. Same with the uh, the arm. See if that scrapes off. Yeah. So ever put it on? Did put it on quite thick, so it is kind of just shelling off quite easily. Right, so next I'll get some wire wool and we'll uh, wire wool these, uh, these parts off. Right, so that's removed the paint off there. The only bit I've got is just a little bit left in those damaged spokes. Now looking at that, actually the metal's been damaged on that one. So I'm going to basically just try and crimp that down and then just clean up the holes. So it's, it's actually gone over one of the holes. I don't know what they've done, but uh, they've damaged one of the at least one of the spoke holes. I might have to drill that out from the top, just clean that metal, file it off, and drill that down just to remake that hole properly. But yeah, that's basically ready. So we'll just have a little uh, chrome polish and shit on the uh, drill, and then that one's done. I think what I'll do is I'll strip that down a little further, take this nut off here and just separate these pieces out and clean it up and then I'll bring that back. I'll use that. So I think we'll get the rim out and we'll have a look at the rim. As I say, it's been painted, hopefully you can see that. Uh, just on here, oops. Right. You can see the rim, it's had some paintwork. Gonna get it in the light so you can see. Let's see that way, that way, there. So you can see around it that it's got paint all around it. Um, but that has protected the chrome underneath. Usually you end up with a lot of rusting in there. So I'm hoping that just some wire wool. I'll bring that back, which it is. Which I was thinking it would because the I did the front wheel a while ago and that came up like new. Hopefully you can see the change in that. I'm trying to do it on the, there we go on the light. You can see the difference now. So between this 
painted area and then if it comes to the foam so what I'll do is I'll continue to do that and then I'll bring you back So I brought you back just for the last bit of that, uh, just so you could see, yeah, I've just gone away and swapped the rims. Um, so it has come up, I don't know if I can get, get a good angle here where I am, but hopefully you can see as I'm turning it, just getting the light, because we're getting light in odd angles. You can now see, I've not done any metal polish on it, it's purely been the uh, just the wire wool. So that has brought it up well, there's a few little bits still on the edge which I'll continue to work, just a bit of paint, but yeah, so although they painted it for some unknown reason, it did actually protect it, um, it covered it and stopped it uh, rusting. Now what you find on these as well is you can tell if it's an original uh, 1990s rim or if it's a reproduction rim. Now I'll just show you what, how you do that, just give me a sec, tighten that off. So this won't come up on camera I know. But let's take my word for it. Just there, there's a little stamp, and I've got. Don't think I've got any chance of getting that on camera. But let's just see. So just here, there's a little stamp. Now the early ones say uh, low rider, and the later ones have got this image, which it does say low rider stamped across the rim instead of around it. But it's also got. Um, a little low rider man so if you don't know what one of those is I liken it to the Heisenberg character the logo out of Breaking Bad just a guy with a moustache glasses and then a hat and that's the low rider man so this is a reproduction rim another reason why it's probably fared quite well they're not as good quality as the early ones you can tell the, the, the metal isn't as, as well chromed but that's what happens when you buy reproductions, I guess. So this will have been the, probably the bike I had when they, that these were on. would have been a repro bike. I've used some of the parts and then done the wheels. So this is just going to go on a, a cheap project that I'm doing. But that's hard to tell. So if it's got the low rider stamp on it, going around it, it's, it's the original 90s. If it's got this on, it's then probably a later one, maybe 2010 uh, sort of time. So that's the rim um, done for the bulk of it. just needs polishing which I'll do. Um, what I'll do is I'll do that and then I'll bring you back and by which time it'll probably be tomorrow when I bring you back and we'll have got the spokes out and we can give them as a clean. So uh, I'll crack on and I'll bring you back in a bit. So while I'm waiting for um, the spokes I've actually got a couple here that are damaged that uh, I can't use. So I'm going to show you the very very tedious uh, process that we go through next. So basically, they've all got green paint on. So all I've been, all I'll do, I want to get a flat bladed knife, and this is mind numbing. So what I normally do is I put some music on while I'm doing it. Scrape the spoke, wire wool, and polish it with the wire wool. And at that time, then I'll also measure, um, stand it against another one. There's a very slight difference, which you might not see on camera, but there's a difference. So then I'll put them out into the piles. So you've got your short and your long. And at the end I'll have half short, half long, and then I can just pick from each one as I'm building. So once again, just take the next spoke. Get rid of the worst paint with a flat blade. No, I don't think there's very many times anybody out there will ever have to do this to this extent. And to be honest, oh, I, hope, I hope you never do, but um, most of you will need to just clean them, so it's just wire wool, and just pass them through, polish them, and that's it. So when the others come out the uh, Citric, I'll do the same, I'll just do them, polish them, and then I'll set everything out, and we'll build you back. So it's going to be tomorrow when I can get on with that, so I'll bring you back then. So see you in a bit. So 24 hours on, I took them out of the bath, the acid citric bath. Um, as you can see, 
for a, a wide range of uh, conditions. It's cleaned the rust off them, but we've got you know, baked on paint um, on them, so they're all in pretty bad condition. So rather than um, trying to you know put a section where I'm cleaning them, you saw me do one yesterday, where basically I just use a flat blade, scrape the paint, and then use uh, some wire wool just to polish the metal up. So what I'll do is I'll do those and then I'll show you how I um, separate them into piles. Once again, it's just by measuring them, but it's a bit of an easy process for doing that. Uh, and then I'll bring you back. All right, see you in a bit. So this is the uh, first pass. It took about 25 minutes. What I've done is that's the pass where I've gone through with the Stanley blade and just basically scraped each one. And that's the sort of all the rubbish that I've taken off. So all I've got to do now is um, give them a pass with the wire wool to polish them up and then I'll bring you back and I'll just show you how to sort them. So total of time elapsed is about 45 minutes from when I first started uh, scraping these and then uh, wire wooling them. So they're all done. Now the way I check what sizes I need is I stand them on a flat surface. So obviously there's quite a lot of interference at the back there but you'll see the height difference so that one that one and that one I'll stand these together now you'll see that they're shorter hopefully you can see the difference there the top of the heads to them so those are the um, they go on the inner um, of the uh, inner line of the hub and these go on the outer so basically you've got so you can see you've got the race at the spoke holes in the middle there so these ones will go in the in the inner side and the smaller ones will go on the outer um, it gets you the same distance so that you know the difference between the spokes is the difference between those holes so all I'm going to do now is go through create two different piles uh, of tall and short ones um, and then I can start doing the rim so I'll bring you back after that Right, five minutes later and we've now got two piles. We've got short spokes, long spokes. Um, I know I'm going to be some short, so what I'm going to do is work with what I've got and then at the end I'll just count how many we're missing. I should have done that at the start, but it doesn't really matter. I'll count how many of each we're missing and I'll get those off this, uh, you know, the part spike uh, and build it up. So what I'm going to do is now try and get the camera in a position where you can see um, how I'm going to do this because this will be a bit complex. I can't get an overhead camera unfortunately. So I'm going to try and get you um, back on the stand but uh, make it and so, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll bring you back in a minute. So I've got my hub, got my rim. Now just to sort of do a little bit of explanation. You've obviously got two sides to the hub. You've also got in essence two sides to the rim. So all the spokes on this side will stay on this side of the rim and then the other side of the hub spokes will stay on that side of the room. So all I do is I'll take, doesn't matter whether you, where you start, but I like to start with the longer spokes, which go on the inner of the hub, as we said, and I'll put it in a position, doesn't matter where you start on the rim, and I'll put it in the first hole on the rim. So you can see we've got that like that. I'll then take the next spoke and I'll put I'll, I usually leave two holes on the inner uh, spoke holes so I'll put it in the third one that then if you count the holes so let me just show you, try and hold on to that so hopefully you can see what I'm talking about there so I've got a spoke in there and then the next um, with me. So you've got spoke hole, spoke there, spoke there, and then in the middle is five holes. So on the rim, I need to count five holes on the this side. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and I will put it in the sixth. It'll make more sense as we go around, but uh, so I just put a spoke nut on there. I'm then going to do the same. I'm going to leave, take a long spoke. Leave two spoke holes on the top, put it in the third. If you count the holes again, the 
between that spoke and that spoke, you've got five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go on there and leave five holes again. One, two, three, four, five, and put it in the sixth. And I'm basically going to repeat that process all the way around the rim. So what I'll do is I'll speed it up now. I'll keep quiet, speed it up, and, show, and then bring you back when I've got gone all the way around so you can see what I do and then try and explain it a bit better. Okay, so if you've done that right, which looking at this I seem to have, you'll find that you've got five holes between every spoke and on the inner ring you've got two holes between every spoke so that's your first pass you've got that lined we'll come to the other side in a, in a short while because we'll need to just I kind of how I, I look through and line those but what I'll do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to put a spoke in the middle so I'm going to take the shorter spokes now so I've got five holes in between each of the, the spokes at the minute I'm going to take the middle hole, so two either side, and I'm going to put a shorter spoke. So how I do that is I'm going to count um, two holes either side. So I'm going to basically take a short spoke and put it in the third hole in the middle, if that makes sense. So you can see there, I've now got two holes from that side of the spoke before I get to that, and two holes from that side of the spoke before I get to that. And I'm going to basically put that in the middle of those. Put a spoke note and these spoke notes they don't have to be tight you just put them on so that they grip you're going to go around and tighten them up after if you start over tightening these you're going to start pulling the rim in different directions and you don't want to be doing that yet you just need to be getting the spokes in in place so now as i said i've got two holes that side two holes that side two holes that side two holes so that lines up so i'm going to go through and fill all the gaps in between and build it up so now you'll find that's your second pass done and you'll find you've got two holes between each spoke measuring from each spoke and you've got two holes in each spoke going around the rim. Now it varies on, I'm no wheel truing professional, the 144 spoke wheels are pretty easy to true because there's so many spokes there's not a lot of movement between each spoke. If you were doing a th the 36 wheels I can't do them, you need a truing uh, rig to do them uh, because each spoke moves quite a lot of the rim so I don't even bother with those, it's just too much um, well, a bit beyond me at the minute but these I'm okay with just due to the fact of very small amount of movement so as long as you do it uniformly on the, when you tighten them up they're good so what I it varies just how I feel I suppose on, on, on when I'm building these but sometimes I'll go through and I'll put some more through or I'll try doing a few on the other side just to try and centralize the wheel so basically I've got to try and pick a point um, on the wheel making sure that so if you twist the wheel like that you can see you can see that the spokes start twisting and aren't level it's not where it wants to sit naturally if you do that the wheel wants to sit there naturally all the spokes there's no kind of twisting so i set it like that's very uh, basic alignments but then i'll take a spoke and run it into the center and then see where if that's leveled where it wants to sit does it want to sit there? Does it want to sit? So you can't probably see it. I kind of run it around the rim, and as, as it starts coming away from the rim, you know you're getting away from it. So then, as it once it goes that way, it's coming away, so it doesn't want to go there. So basically, it's going to be one of these two um, holes on the rim. Now that looks a little bit so it's twisting out. So I think it's that one. Once again, it's a bit of trial and error. Don't get too wound up by it all and even counting to three and five on these holes I make mistakes and I come around and I'm like well why have I got six and you go around and go well I've only got four there or I've only got a different space there so basically it's, 
it's, a, it's an art I suppose but it's, it's not something to get too stressed out by so if they're not twisting that one I'm just trying to gauge it by I just look over the top of the rim and just try and see now looking at that it is sort of pointing away from what a straight line I would say would be so I think it may actually be the other hole as I say there's probably a more scientific way of doing it doesn't work for me um, it, to be honest actually if somebody has got a more scientific way of finding out how to do different sides please comment I'm, I'm always uh, willing to learn and hear more um, so I'm going to put it in the other hole now just see if it looks better so as long as the the, under, the other side's not twisted so it's not doing that or that it's sat normally that does actually look pretty good so I'm going to take I'm going to do the same on this side I'm going to leave two on the top and one on below which then gives me again it gives me five holes so all I do on this side is count two four and two four five and put it in the sixth hole like I say if you go around half the rim and you're not happy with how it looks you know that the holes are wrong on this side so you just redo so this is where it becomes a little bit fiddly and a little bit time consuming but once again pretty happy with how they're lining with the others um, I think either way I put that it's gonna you know they're both sitting the same on the spoke so I'm gonna go around and see and do it if it doesn't look right I'll, I'll undo this side and, and just move them over one but um, we'll, we'll go around and see The other uh, camera's got quite a low memory, so unfortunately I ran out a little bit there. But um, hopefully you can see what I was saying. So you saw me do that side, filling in the gaps. And you can see that we've got gaps of... Uh, you can see it. So you've got your spoke, and you've got two holes, and you've got another spoke, and you've got two holes and another spoke. And that correlates to the same. So if you follow that spoke down, so you can see, you've got spoke, two holes, another spoke, same going that way. So that's how we did the first side of it. And then I turned it over, and as I was saying, I didn't want this to be twisted. I didn't want the spokes underneath to look like they were twisting on the rim. And then I've gone through and I've put, I lined my first spoke up and kind of ran it around the rim. And you can see when it starts coming away from the rim. So you're trying to get it sort of central. I'll be honest, you probably won't get it first time. I didn't uh, just then. Um, and then I've done the same, I've left. Um, so between that spoke, you can see one, two, three, four, five holes. And then there's a spoke. And on the rim, it's the same. You've got one, two, three, four, five holes. Then a, a spoke. And I've just gone around. So I've only done the first pass on this side. I'm going to go around again. And I'm going to fill the holes in in the middle. Like I say, if anybody out there is a professional wheel builder and knows a better way of doing it than this, happy to learn as I go. But this, this seems to work for me. And hopefully, as you can see along the top, there's no twisting. Where the spokes are going out, they're not twisted and they're kind of following the line. So you can see this spoke here is following the same sort of line as the spoke beneath it, which is what you're trying to get. You're trying to get them to look... If you've got a spoke up here and it's doing that from the hub um, on an angle and it's not following the line of the one below it, you know this thing. You're never going to get them above each other because obviously the spokes are offset. So you are going to get an offset, but what you're looking for is following the same sort of line when you've done the other side. Once you've done, this is the hardest part. Getting these lined up is the most difficult bit. You know, doing the other side, doing one side, easy. You, you're just doing, you're counting the holes in the rim. But actually lining this side up to the other side and making sure they're not skewed either way that is the hardest part once you've got that done it's easy street again it's going to be now a case of just filling the holes in each side keeping the the distances and, and i'll be honest as i said earlier i still get this wrong you know we're only counting to five and we're only counting to five on the rim but i still get mistakes and i still end up well i've got four holes there and you go around and go, oh, i've got six there you just have to redo it it's just patience got plenty of patience with it you'll be fine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a second pass with the short spokes and fill in these gaps um, and then I'll bring you back. So that's the second pass on this side and I've just done a time check. So I've been doing this um, an hour and a 
half now but that isn't just spoking so when um, you saw me take the spokes out of the bath clean them all which took at least half hour so I've been on this about 45 minutes because I've been doing bits in between so 45 minutes and I've got this this far um, but now it is simply a case of filling in the gaps um, long spokes in the inner uh, short spokes in the outer just go around them You'll probably do you know another pass each side just keep doing it so what I'm not doing is pulling the a lot of tension on one side of the wheel I'm trying to ensure that I've got this I can't get the camera um, middle up but I'm trying to get it so I'm not pulling the hub to um, once in fact that's probably the center so I'm not pulling the hub either way and now that that hub is actually quite solid in fact, it is pretty solid but there's not much there's no movement in that hub you can't you know move the hub back and forth there the, the spokes are now grabbing it but just ensure you're only going around doing these um, sort of finger tight don't start putting any extra on because what you'll do is you'll end up pulling the hub one way or another and then you end up putting tension on without needing to it's just literally put them on wind them on as soon as you feel it it stop and then do the next one and just keep working around so what I'll do is I'll complete this side flip it over and put some more spokes in bring it back for a, couple, a minute or so and then I'll uh, finish it off okay so I've spent another five minutes on it I'm just going to try and I'm not going to take you through the whole process but um, you know, the whole me spoke in every hole but I've just tried to do it randomly so I can show you what you'd end up with so if we take this spoke here um, after this after this spoke and before that one you should have two holes so if I follow that down to the rim so that spoke it's going to get more difficult so this spoke here before it gets to that spoke there should be two holes and there are as I get around here from this spoke before you get to any other spokes there should be one hole so if I follow that spoke down and there's one hole then I've got a batch of one two three four five spokes and if you count up here one two three four five and then there's a hole so the hole down here correlates to that hole there so you're just basically ensuring that out of many holes there are you're leaving the same holes down the bottom there and you just keep filling them in with short or long spokes ensuring that your long spokes go in the top and you should find as you're putting them in and just doing them that they're all about the same gap from the rim when you're when you're putting the um, spokes uh, nuts on the end of it and the same with the side I've not done as many on this side I don't think but I've basically just gone around and started filling in the holes and just doing them randomly but trying to spread it around the rim so I'm not pulling the rim in any particular direction it does get pretty difficult when you start filling in the gaps because I've got fairly big uh, fingers so trying to put your hands in there to tighten them so it, you could end up doing anything but I've tried to do them by hand to tighten them up tight as I you know just by hand and then I'll go around when I've done them all and I'll just start nipping them all up as, as I go around the rim small hands you probably got a lot easier getting in there in between the spokes so what I'm going to do I'm going to complete this spoke it all and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to start tightening so eventually having gone through that pain um, you should end up with all spokes in I don't know if you can hear that they're not very tight they're just as I say finger tight but that's what you want um, so what we'll do next is we'll build up the um, hub so then I can basically center it and spin it and see um, where we are so a lot of these actually some of these aren't even um, finger tight they're quite loose so I think that's as it pulls and straightens it ends up moving but you've got all your spokes in let's get this hub rebuilt right so first off I've put I've greased all the bearings and done all that so first one to go in trying not to get dirt on the bearings is the kind of uh, case with the um, thread inside and that only drops in one way so there's two uh, two sides obviously one is slightly wider so you sort of drop that in the middle ensuring you've got this little uh, sort of catch in there because that mounts up with part of the axle in a bit so we drop that in but let's take that out and show you what I'm going to do so as you can see it's sort of it's got two ledgers on it and the ledgers you'll sit with little shoes on and the shoes will sit like that hopefully you can see that try and bring it a bit closer to the camera it's going to sit and you've got these two pins in the top 
which the two holes in there will sit in. So when you drop this down, it will drop it down like that. It will make a seat like that. Only goes one way. If you put it the other way, it starts forcing the shoes out. So basically, you drop that inside with the shoes. Shoes centered on those little ledges. And then line in the two openings on there with the two pins. And if you've got it right, it'll sit flush with the hub. You come to the other side, you've got your bearing cage in there, you've got the other bearing cage there, and then you've got your screw thread. You drop that on, screw that in. Then you've got your bearing, your outer bearing cover. Finally, the lock nut. And what you should find is when you turn, a little tight. Basically, I've got that bearing cap end cap there a little bit too tight so the wheel's not turning wheel as you can see now so I've, I might just need to take a little bit actually there's no play in that so basically as you're turning as you with the pedaling you'll get that and then as you back pedal it locks it's not a very good thing with my hand but as I'm pedaling I'm doing it and then as I back pedal it locks like that and that's your brake mechanism so what I've done is I've done that first so then when I spin the wheel really could do with a rig on it but as you spin the wheel I can then see if I've got it straight which you can see it's out at the minute um, but I need to then start tightening these up but I need to be able to get it on there to spin it up to see where I am out at all so what I'm going to do now is start working my way through the spokes tighten them uh, so they just nip with the screwdriver I'm not going to put any force on because once again as soon as you start moving it either way you're going to start moving the rim so basically I'll go through it um, and just tighten each one and then I'll bring you back. Right, so what I did was start going around with the screwdriver and then thought there's a much better way of doing this. So I have a like a just a, a battery drill, but it has torque settings on. You can use it as drill, hammer drill, and then you've got all these different torques on torque settings. So I just set it onto number one and just went round until each screw does that. Bit. I'm trying to do it now. Until each one clicks on one. Worked my way around it and then spun it up. And there was a few kinks where it kind of when you spun it it, it kind of wobbled out. So if Make sure I can get this right on camera. So if it's bending over, if it wobbles and it wobbles that way, you want to tighten this side to pull it back. And if it vice versa, if it goes that way, you want to tighten this side to bring it back and basically just spin it now. This is bike built wheel build 101. It's, it's nowhere near professional, but it, it works for me. There is proper truing rigs which I'm planning on either buying or building. Where you can put it on spin it and then you can set the uh, some pointers at the rim and then you can basically do it properly mine is just purely visual and with these wheels it seems a lot easier it works for me 
it, it maybe out people out there screaming at the screen going this is not the right way to do it but for me this works i've not had any issues my wheels have been fine um and they've been true um maybe it's just down to you know personal skills um, and being able to do it by uh, eye but there are better ways of doing it just as i say this is how it goes for me so basically now there's no dull if i run my fingers over them there's no there's no dull sound sometimes when you get a loose spoke i'll loosen one off for you so as i run my finger over it so you get a ping you get a rattle and a dull thud uh, which then means it's loose but they've all been done to i did it went round it and did it to on the torque setting of number one and then i've gone round uh with on number two so just set that back to two it's so basically gone back in and just torque them up again until they click on two that's it and basically I'm happy with that when I spin it now it's running true so that's it that's wheel building done um, happy for you guys to comment below I've just got to polish it and clean it but yeah for now that's me done that'll go on the bike I've got a, a proper eight ball low rider tire um, I'll just take a picture of it and, and pop that at the end of the video but right, thank you for being with me hopefully it's been useful um, if there's any better comments obviously put them in below I'm, I always like to read um, and thank you. And I'll see you next time. So I thought I'd just bring you back to show you. So now it's all on. I've got a new eight ball low rider tire on. Well, refurbished eight ball low rider tire. Ready to go. That's ready to go on the bike I've got ready. So uh, once again, thanks for being here while I've done this video. If you've liked it, subscribe. Um, if you've got any comments, always happy to hear that. So uh, see you on the next video. Bye.